This is Dust War Journals episode 42A, or whatever you want to call it. This is the mailbag special. Yeah, yeah so the best now, part. Yes, the best part of waking up is questions in a cup, no? <laughs> what? That didn't really work. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, head right into our mailbag uh, this this time, and first off, we got a question from Marwan Marwan on uh, Board Game Geek, mm. yeah, and uh, th- this, this is one, something, yeah. Yeah, this one uh, I noticed. It's not specifically, I mean, meant to us. This was obviously posted on Board Game Geek, mm. yeah. uh, but I thought it was an interesting question because uh, I've been thinking about this and similar stuff. Uh, well, anyways, uh, the question here is, uh, the air alert ability states the following. Take an air alert special action to select an enemy aircraft in line of sight and roll a die on a faction symbol, friendly vehicles attacking it hit on target symbol as well as faction symbol for the remainder of the turn. Uh, well, and the question with that comes, how, do you, uh, how are you interpreting uh, vehicles in the above description? Is it strictly ground vehicles or does it include both air and ground vehicles? The term vehicle is used... In the rulebook to describe both ground vehicles only and air and ground vehicles sometimes. Yeah, th- this is something that uh, similar questions have cropped up from time to time. And I think that the intent uh, is that the term vehicle is supposed to only refer to ground vehicles and not aircraft. But the problem is exactly as he states here, uh, the rulebook isn't consistent on this. Uh, there are some uh, some places in the rulebook where aircraft are included in that term. Yeah, uh, the one that comes to mind immediately for me was the discussion way back now uh, for critical hits. Because mm-hmm. the rules for critical hits, they say that the vehicle damaged, blah, 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 critical hit. Okay, so does that include aircraft? Can an aircraft be mm. critically hit? Mm. And the answer was yes, it can. Yeah. So in that case, it is Aircraft are included in the term vehicles. But on the other hand, it's the opposite sometimes. The rules for wrecks, for example, they state vehicles as well. And the answer has been that air, aircraft do not become wreck at all yeah. when they are destroyed. So it's very difficult to know when which is which. <laughs> exactly. And uh, since we don't have an official statement when it comes to this as far as I know at least or uh, no I'm just uh, thinking about uh, the wording of this here uh, yeah. are you sure that the air ability states just this that it's vehicles attacking it hit on target symbol as well because yes. I have been okay if you're so sure mm-hmm. uh, but because in my mind ground infantry also and superhumans and stuff like that no. Okay, then I owe I'm, I'm, Right apologies. now, I'm, I'm reading straight from the rule book now. Oh, okay. on, on the roll of faction, any friendly vehicles performing ah. an attack or sustained yeah. attack against that aircraft yeah. hits on roll. Blah, 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 could, blah. Uh, could you, just to my for my conscience, uh, does anyone have the, could quickly uh, get the card for the uh, uh, Allied HQ Walker, uh, the Type 5, 6 Yeah, lives. the Mobile HQ. Yeah, the Mobile HQ. Because uh, I just... well, we do know that the cards are not really supposed to be a reference. No. but I mean, it, it, at it, at the card it actually says units. Thank you. Yeah. Because I had a game once uh, with Kalle, and he was coming at me with the uh, Air Force, uh, Germany, mm-hmm. German Air Force, and I did this mm-hmm. towards him. And I had both uh, Sergeant Victory and, well, basically all of my army target that vehicle, uh, that that <laughs> that uh, aircraft that I wanted to take down. And uh, in that case, I th- was so sure I was in the right. But it could have been then that they have changed the rules to upgrade it to vehicles now. That's what made my... Then I don't feel I can... It, it is possible because we, we have to remember for these uh, older units, the cards were actually released before the rules, Yeah, if you recall. Perhaps it was. And also, I think Magnus was the tournament the organizer same. in that I'm tournament, the... so Magnus was to blame because he let me do it. Mm. So <laughs> it, I'm, I'm, I, my, my conscience is clear. That's all that matters to me. But now, from now, it's only vehicles that hit... Aircraft yeah, I'm, I'm looking here at another card. I'm looking at the SSU controller helicopter, which is a newer card. Yeah, it was not in the old bunch. 
uh, and it's the same. It's it states only friendly units mm. that can use it. So, uh, but but in many cases, uh, you you can't just look at these cards no. because they are just sort of a reminder mm. of what the rule is. Yes, but in as a counterpoint to that, you there's a very huge difference between the words unit and the word vehicle yeah. and you it's very very easy you have to you have to know that this is something you should check so it, it that is a problem that we still kind of have to deal with unfortunately um, so that that is kind of a separate thing but if we go for the whole uh, vehicle thing if that includes aircraft or not since we don't really in this particular case uh, especially don't have an actual official answer uh, I would say that play it as you want, as long as both players agree uh, before the game starts yeah, how what, you're going to use the rule. But what do you think the intention is? In, in this case, um, I could honestly see it being ground vehicles only. Uh, it seems to be kind of a uh, uh, fluff-wise, it would make sense that... Um, usually you have aircraft go up against other aircraft. That's a kind of a natural thing. But in this case, you have a ground unit that spots the aircraft and basically makes everyone, hey, target that. And I could see it being referring to ground vehicles only uh, I'm, in I'm that way. I'm actually thinking of the sort of use of radios because in yeah. the game, all vehicles and aircraft count as having a radio. And that's yeah. what I'm thinking so both ground vehicles and aircraft should be included to benefit from it, but no infantry unit. That's an interesting point. Even if point. they have a radio. I mean, mm. one could argue that, well, this command unit, they have a radio, why can't I mm. use it? But I think it's, to keep it simple, they would say any non-infantry unit would benefit, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, I t I'm so into that thought as well, that they, they coordinate with the radio, that's why I definitely think that ally uh, the the aircraft should be able to be included in the vehicle uh thing the other thing is that that's one of the skills that at least in our meta hardly ever gets used so to limit it would be even worse that yeah, is a I, good point and i wouldn't it's mind yeah, no problem okay we okay we continue without the man in the in the middle uh the cat has been uh Doing some naughty cat's stuff. Out of the bag. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag and even uh, out of its collar. That's why he, Giannis had to rush it. Uh, so, well, what I was supposed to say that it, I could go with it only being ground vehicles, just as Johannes said. But then I would want it to upgrade to uh, crosshair and fraction symbols. Yeah, and that would also it's only successful on in thirty three percent. Yeah, of the of the times you use it, which means it's. A, it's yeah. hardly used, unfortunately. Exactly. We, mm. we, at least, like you said, uh, around here, we very, very rarely see it used. Yeah. Or is doing it like a, a free action for that mobile HQ uh, vehicle. That I could see that working well, as well. You never know. That is just now, since, 30 recent. since we are seeing more and more aircraft and mm. also recently some upgraded yeah, yeah, some, yeah, some upgrades yeah. to, to at least the allied aircraft. Yeah. Maybe we will see more aircraft, meaning air alert will be more valuable. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I don't know, but yeah, I have the same feeling that it's better in this case to include aircraft. I, I think that to me, that feels natural. Yeah, good point. So I, I think that's the intent, but I haven't seen any official answer. Mm. Yeah, and so. since it started with units, and then it was everyone. So uh, you shouldn't downgrade it too much, too quick. I think. Yeah, that, that's also <laughs> a good point. Steps. So our, our kind of consensus and recommendation is yeah. that mm -hmm. you use vehicles and aircraft in this, in this case until we get an official uh, no. ruling for yeah. it. All right. Then we have a few interesting questions that came by email uh, from Trent Nichols. And uh, Trent writes, uh, your last podcast got me thinking about upgrade card packs. Uh, on one hand, I like the idea of more options. Uh, and on the other hand, being able to look at a squad and know exactly what they do is part of what makes Dust great. I agree. What do you think about making an upgrade pack that functions like the SSU Commissars? So you have like an... Uh, uh, like extra little minis that you can put into your specific, not not like a hero, but like an extra soldier in that unit or something like that. So I guess that is kind of the 
the idea there. In a way, it seems like we are almost getting that. Uh, not mm-hmm. in the way that you get extra guys in a unit, but that you get um, a bunch of different minis in a box, and then you pick like pick them together in the configuration that you want to. Uh, that's kind of the way they are dealing with this uh, in the future, it feels like. Yeah, I hear Trent's uh, thoughts there that you have to be able to pick it out on the battlefield. Uh, An other way of doing it, but almost doing it the way he wants it, is that you uh, release uh, a few cards with a few tokens and uh, you uh, have like the dust... uh, stand the in the round square the, mm. the plate plate there and on top of it you have perhaps a little stash of grenades and or uh, whatever you're mm. upgrading to and you put that in the square with because then you see oh there's something strange in your square mm. why do you have that ah it's your grenades and they you can see of course that's the grenades and also it gives the studio a possibility to sell almost minis for the upgrades, not only card upgrade packs, because doing upgrade packs for the studio could, of course, not be that um, profitable because uh, they don't make any money. They only take time to mm. do cards. But if they can sell a product and have the cards, that perhaps it can be more interesting for them as well. And in a way, this is basically what the scenery like the VK stash is doing. Yeah. But uh, in this case, instead of being an upgrade yeah. for, for your vehicles it's for your units that they carry with them yeah and instead of six uh, barrels with vk stuff you have six different uh, things that stands on those uh well mm, well yeah yeah it's um, an interesting thought that's, yeah yeah i think so too it's uh, uh like i think we when we discussed this in the last episode um the sort of consensus was not to overdo it i mean uh, I think what you see is what you get is very important that which Trent mentions that you can just at a glance basically you just quickly look and see and if you have been playing this game for a little while you will quickly learn what these different units do maybe you don't know exactly what the stat is but but still you have a pretty good idea what this unit can do so you don't want to change that with okay, this unit has a whole bunch of upgrades and now does something completely different. So you, you, it's a sort of fine balance. But I could see that as well, as yeah. long as you don't, you know, do it too much. Because if they sell like a box with six different upgrades and you can only use an upgrade once, so you, it's like a, a one box and then you buy that or mm-hmm. four or five yeah, each, in, each in a box or something. Each upgrade can only be used like once per yeah. army yeah. and each unit yeah. can only have one upgrade maximum, yeah. for example. So, so then so it was very clear limited. and yeah, mm-hmm. you don't have that overpowering that now everyone is running around with 400 uh, Panzerfaust uh, yeah. basic rifles and what whatnot. But you can just do that yeah, little. The, the, the really the most difficult thing there is to find something that would be fun and interesting and unique but at the same time not being that powerful that you feel mm. like everyone have to use it so that's that's the really difficult part i think yeah. but uh, we'll see i it's, i don't see it as something impossible so yeah mm. it's an interesting idea Um, The other question we we had from Trent is, uh, with the fluff stating that the Allies have air superiority and their planes recently getting a buff, uh, what do you think about them getting an Armor 3 plane? Would it need to be really expensive to prevent breaking the game or possibly not released until a future rebalancing? It's always bothered me that the superior Air Force had at least aircraft models. Uh, Yeah, that is a good point. Uh, We do know that there is a... A really powerful up- upgraded buff plane coming for the Allies some point in the future, the Black Mamba. Yeah. Um, we don't know when it's going to arrive. We don't know if it's going to be the first aircraft three, but it could very well be. But well, well, my take on it is that it's almost it, it, it's a bigger plane, but designed the same way. Mm-hmm. So I think the Black Mamba is just going to have extra wounds, uh, if anything. And I think that the Type 3 w- fl- flyers are reserved for the Vril and other of that nature. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking I, either the Type 3 will start to arrive in 1968... Or it will be the Vril and the Saucers who yeah. are coming. Um, but but definitely my... see more 
types of models would be interesting. Oh, yeah. that, because we all, all, all nowadays we only have the one mm. uh, basic type. With the Black Mamba we are getting two. And yeah, what could be something... A third option, uh, some if we go the complete other way, some lighter uh, kind of fighter aircraft, uh, yeah, like I chopper mean, hunting plane at, of at some sort. At the moment, sort. almost all aircraft in the game are aircraft are type two armor yeah. twos. I there's, think it's like yeah, there's some um, very few exceptions. There's only the storage and the uh, banana. That's and banana is a cho- chopper, of course, as well. Yeah. So those are the ones. Mm-hmm. The banana is only a one. armor one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But anyway, those are very <laughs> special ones, and they mm. aren't even an official kit that you can buy. You have to to do some conversion yourself and stuff. So uh, I would like to see like a broader spectrum. I would like to see all factions basically get uh, armor ones and threes. So yeah, so you have more variety there. Um, at the same time, Dust is not an air combat game. Nope. <laughs> it's still, you know, focused on the ground combat and the heroes and their struggles. So, again, it's a fine line that you have to balance not to overdo it. And I understand why they haven't really focused that much on aircraft. Um, so... Yeah, it's 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 the same old, same old. It's a difficult line to walk on what, if, what you want to focus on. And of course, I mean, as a company, they have to think about which models will sell the most because that's why they are there, to sell their products. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, that's true. Uh, our next question comes from our fellow Viking Mats Edvardsson. What is an appropriate entry fee for a dust tournament and what should be included in the fee? Do you, for example, think it's a good thing to include food in the price? And uh, it's kind of a multi-layered question here and I definitely understand why uh, he's posing this question. Uh, as I mentioned before uh, in the in the main part of the episode, so to speak. Uh, Mats is one of the guys who is arranging Dust Nordic together with me. Uh, so this has been kind of a discussion point. And because of that, I don't really feel that I'm <laughs> the best person I mean, to answer this. Yeah, this is so. always a discussion point. <laughs> yeah. And for me, uh, well, there's so many things you need to consider into this. First of all, basically, is... Uh, why why are you doing this tournament? Like, is it a company that want to make money from it? Okay, then immediately you get some kind of lower limit on, on what you can do to actually, you know, survive. Uh, which is usually raises it quite a bit because you have to possibly pay people salaries to, to actually be there and, and do things. Um, but if not, if you're doing it uh just yeah li- like we do we are not a, or you are not a company doing <laughs> no. it so so you don't have to 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 worry about yeah. those kind of things you need to cover of course the expense uh, any expense of um of the uh, like the locale where you yeah. are usually there's some kind of cost there it depends on what type of place i mean this we are doing this in a community the falcon community center uh, and they present a pretty good price, yeah. but there is a price, so that has to be covered. Uh, and then anything else that you have expenses for, you you have yeah. to cover it, and that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. For me personally, when he he asks, is food a good thing to include? For me, right now where I am in my life, I would say yes, <laughs> because I'm lazy. Yeah. And it's nice to have, so you don't have to really think about it. You just pay and you can go there. You don't have to, you know, go some other place, find whatever. So so I like that. But I understand that many tournaments, they, they can't really do that. They don't have the opportunity. They don't have the manpower. Mm. They can't do it. So yeah. And I, I kind of figure if you look at the other side of that spectrum, um, maybe if you... If you're a student and you don't have that much uh, money to go around, then maybe exactly. you would prefer to not pay a price that includes food because that price would probably be 
a bit higher yeah, and then yeah, bring obviously. bring your own cheaper food from home maybe yeah <laughs> so sure. so there, there, there's definitely like you say there's uh, there's some options that you have to choose between and nothing is really correct yeah so and in that respect you sort of have to of course it's very good to to ask these questions so yeah, if, sure. you have, if you know a lot of people that might be interested send the questions to them mm-hmm. and ask that's fine, of course. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, I would kind of tend to go for the cheaper price so that as many people as possible can be included. Mm. Because if you if you put a too high of a price point, even if you include a lot of stuff in it, you are going to exclude a bunch of people because they simply they can't afford it. They, they won't pay that money, even if you do get a lot of stuff. So... Yeah, well, I, I I hear what you're saying, and I agree with it um, for most part. Um, I feel though that uh, the benefits, as Magnus was into, they are about not needing to run around, get your food, get stuff working, not just taking the first best place, which most likely are more expensive. So for those who are short of money. Uh, and I've been to some tournaments where I've been short of money, God knows. Uh, it has been very good to know, especially when in Poland, even if my special food needs sometimes have not been <laughs> met because I forgot to hammer it into the, the <laughs> tournament organizers. So I, I'm not getting precisely what I need to eat, but at least I'm getting something yeah. and I don't have to rush away. I can take a break and it's definitely cheaper than if I go to the restaurant outside. So, so I feel like, of course, I, I would say you should include food. Perhaps you could, of course, do. But that's hard, of course, for Mats then uh, to do the options. You can yeah. pay for the tournament and you can pay to get food. And then you can have some voucher and you change that for the food you're getting. Um, <laughs> but of course, it's probably easier just to go one or the other. Um, here in Sweden, food is expensive. Yeah, unfortunately. So I would definitely think that everyone would enjoy if he included food uh, in some rudimentary way uh, so that people could... Um, because and, and when you're playing the tournament, um, you don't really need to have that gourmet food as well. You just want to get not hungry. Mm-hmm. So it's okay to have uh, potatoes and some... <laughs> meatballs or something like that just it's it, uh, it's it's it can be cheap it can be easy just feed me i can continue i can play the games i'm here for the games not for the food mm-hmm. then you can have the options mm-hmm. and going out for uh, restaurants and stuff like that um when you do the small tournaments which is not Mats is talking about here it has been very fun when we all 10 12 15 20 go out to the same restaurant or perhaps go to two restaurants half there, half there, and you have that community vibe going on the restaurant. That's a very nice thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well... But that's also a very nice thing to have uh, with, if the food is included. I mean, um, at least you... uh, Did you participate in in the tournament up at Matza's place? No, Uh, unfortunately. No, no. Yeah, Yeah, I did. did. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. and that that was was, uh, still... uh, relatively smaller tournament but yeah. we were all there it really was a community event yeah that exactly. we get we got together it was very social and it was very nice in that way yeah and i'm thinking um uh, it seems very successful what they are doing over in the u.s yeah. Yeah, yeah with the best yeah, yeah, yeah exactly where the focus is both on gaming but also on socializing and having that nice dinner and everything yeah, absolutely and it's a it's a nice concept i like yeah. that but uh, Obviously, it becomes more expensive and, and some people won't afford it. And that's yeah. just how it is, basically. So mm-hmm. it depends on what you want to achieve, basically. Do mm-hmm. you want as many players as possible? Then try to go as cheap as possible. Mm-hmm. If you want to make the event like as special as possible, then maybe include and maybe have some nice food. But... Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'll stick my neck out. And in the different bus, uh, dust uh, tournaments I've been to, uh, we are a community that uh, would like that more than other communities. So yeah. I, that could perhaps I, be true. Yeah, yeah, I think it 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 he's going to win more than he loses if he does uh, the food, mm. the social thing with it. Yeah, um, but that's, so, that's yeah. my take on it. So that's an interesting point. 
Next question comes from Oliver Galka. Do you think Blutkreutz Laser Grenadiers should get a hero with fits, which fits the theme? If yes, what skills and weapons would you give him? And I th- yeah, absolutely, definitely. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, please. Mm. And uh, I, I'm thinking. I don't know. <laughs> Because, go, uh, I, because, because uh, I, actually, mm. the, the reason I think here is uh, very much the same if we compare it with the with Amigos, mm. uh, which now got a, which going to get a really nice hero to bump them up with mm. Nadir uh, here, and I feel like the Laser Grenadiers uh, could get something similar that if we do uh, an Axis hero that is Blue Kreutz. Um, not specific, but Blue Kreutz faction. So you, if you use him with, so it's kind of a combination of Nadir and, in a way, um, the uh, the Yuk, the Master Yuk, the uh, PLA Steel Guard hero. If we have a really powerful, relatively cheap hero uh, that is specifically Blue Kreutz uh, <laughs> level, uh, like armor two. So you have to use him in a Blue Kreutz army, or you have to forfeit your faction bonus that would be really interesting especially if we also give him some kind of boost to laser weapons i don't know specifically so just kind of push him in that direction first i want to say that blutkreutz is the faction in the game that already has the most heroes yes that is true factions yeah (laughs) straight up there's no one even close so in my opinion a lot of other factions could get heroes first. <laughs> Second, for me, at least the Soldier 2 Laser Grenadiers, they, are, they aren't really like heroic in that sense. They are sort of elite troop, but to me, they are those faceless. They can't almost even think for themselves. They just follow whatever Sigrid said, says to them. So I don't really see them needing a hero theme-wise. Maybe... The heavy guys, maybe the heavy Ooh. laser grenadiers in that case, for me. Well, uh, the heavy laser grenadiers uh, are now l- less usable than the um, Type 2 because they are haven't been repriced and stuff like that. So I, I truly get that you might want to bump them a bit. but uh, And I know that the Blood Curse are the most heroes. But the Blood Curse have a big, a big problem that they are so slow. And uh, they are... They have a hard time getting to where they want to be mm-hmm. in the game board. Uh, so I would definitely want to see... I don't want to see a superhero in, in any kind of way. Or not a big, powerful guy, but someone that can move... Perhaps just having a on the on the double, actually, on mm-hmm. one of those. Because those those guys never really get to where they want to be. They You have them and you sacrifice them when, so someone can shoot at them, not to be too interested in the rest of it. Uh, okay, you can do a lot of things with the block things and put them into mm. Bloidkreutz, but if you don't want to give the Bloidkreutz all their usual stuff that all the other ones have, I would fix that with a small hero. Uh, I would actually also... I wouldn't mind him having a, a weapon that can fire on aircrafts because that's something that really, really, really are important for the Bloidkreutz. So mm. I would go like with a, perhaps... A, well, give him, yeah, give him, give him a laser rifle, and a Fliegerfaust, and at the double, and four lives, type two, uh, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. That that's the type of hero I would want for 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 them, and um, because also the other heroes, if you play a laser grenadier, more of a soldieristic army for Bloodcrows, you you usually don't have all the other heroes. Yeah, you have the options, and that's mm. very nice, and it's very good for them, but. You usually only have one or two extra heroes, so I, I don't think it has to do anything bad for the balance. But that's my take for it. Uh, so, all right. Our next question comes from Johannes Christensen. Uh, what are your thoughts on conventions and tournaments in regards to the risk of contagion from the coronavirus? Yeah, this is this is a this is a hard one. <laughs> so I mean, what, are, what are you doctors saying about this? <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 well it's always a numbers game, of course. Yeah. Uh, we know now that it's the the older men that die. Uh, almost anything else, everything else is just uh, 
not that important. So it, it, statistics wise, of yeah, course, yeah, it's of important course. if people die. But well, yeah, well, that's yeah. that's another thing. Mm. Uh, but to me, so, so my worry has gone down a bit mm-hmm. when when we learn more and the more we learn it. Uh, but but basically, for my sake, I won't. I won't uh, plan or put anything in stones until I know what's the situation in. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to go to a country, for instance, and not being able to get back. Or most likely our country, we let anything back. Uh, so because that's our way of you doing it. And fine, it seems to be working yeah. almost. So I don't, I'm not going to ham- hammer down on that. But um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think you you have to take it in account, and uh, we just have to wait and see what happens. And the, yeah. um, the good thing with the uh, both the Nordic and the uh, Warsaw tournaments is that it's quite far in ahead. So I hope it will have been. I'm naive to think that it will be uh, at least contained. So, yeah, yeah. So one can go there without any hesitation. Yeah, I, know. I, I know that there's a lot of things uh, uh, said in the news or written in the news uh, but I also think of it like as a whole there is a very very the the, the risk the chance of you being uh, you know catching the virus is very very small no it's 100 percent because none has had it before so you will get it it's just a question of how many years until you get it because everyone will get it because it's, right. it's a cold uh, but the what you're thinking about is are you going to get it and it's going to be bad for you uh yeah, exactly. is it going to be harmful yeah. uh is it risking your loved ones and stuff like that mm-hmm. things with really concerns ones stuff but everyone will get it you can't avoid it at least you if you don't die by natural causes beforehand because <laughs> we haven't seen it as humans so yeah sure i, mm. I don't know i'm not a like virologist so uh, <laughs> now i catch a, a very knowledgeable cambridge uh they, they professor have a, on yeah, bbc sh- sure they, they ago, have so. a nasty mm. habit of hanging around way one way or the other yeah. but, but that still, is true but uh, yeah. the rest, that is a sep- that is quite a separate question though so <laughs> yeah like the, uh, what i'm saying is that the, the risk of you dying from it looks like it's very very small when mm. you look at the actual numbers yeah sure but still, you know, it's... Of course, you, you, you shouldn't just disregard it completely. You should exactly. take precautions. Uh, like, you should uh, wash regularly. Mm-hmm. You should use antibacterial, like, uh, hand cream and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, those, alcohol gels. I mean, those and, normal yeah. hygiene stuff that you usually do, hopefully. You should yeah. probably do just maybe a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't think you have to go around being, you know, scared out of your pants every day. Yeah, uh, that's so. So, so maybe, least, yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, to, so kind of to our general recommendation would kind of be keep your hygiene. Hmm. Um, maybe be careful, <laughs> and uh, and I think I think just uh, just. Uh, be vigilant is kind of the, yeah, the basic thing. So don't don't be foolhardy and maybe avoid stuff like uh, shaking people's hand when you greet them. And uh, if you need to sneeze, do it in your arm. Uh, like, yeah, those kind of things, basically. It's the basic stuff you should do when you have a cold any day. Yeah, so it's, exactly. Uh, um, it's like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, and if you're really worried, I mean, most countries, they have their health department giving recommendations. Yeah. Like where you should probably not fly or travel to Mm -hmm. at this point so just follow those recommendations and yeah yeah. and uh, Johannes also writes that he does wonder what the rest of the community thinks so yeah this is a good topic for just general discussion just how people view this all over the world so get into this thread on Facebook if you want to or just uh, send emails to us and maybe we'll take uh, care of this uh, take this up at a later time as well there's another spin of it though that is a little bit of a Pandora box that I perhaps shouldn't open but that's the thing that uh, we've seen a lot of other, at least, companies that we know of in China that ain't producing minis at the moment. Mm. So I'm serious. That's that's my biggest concern. How is it going for the studio? Can they keep the factories open? How will open you on? get your games? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's it's okay that other games don't produce, but I hope they have some connection to the authorities that they can open before and have like uh, <laughs> draft people in from other yeah we, 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 yeah, we just have to see but, about it but it yeah. is serious and yeah, really to is. all of those people yeah. over there and to all of those that uh, have 
you know that that caught the virus and to anyone who actually died or lost a member of oh, course definitely. it's, it's, yeah. it's a tragedy mm. yeah yeah hearts so, out to you yeah mm. of course yeah, of course all right our next question comes from uh, martin gorsalak is there any chance for some card updates concerning change of stats uh don't hold your breath is my advice <laughs> because i well to put it like this Yes, there will be changes to the stats and to the cards. It won't be in at least a couple of years. It will probably be in the next big version of the game. Uh, and I think we are still uh, years away from that. Smaller smaller things might happen. I mean, yes. we just saw this the updated rule for the Allied airplanes with mm-hmm. the bombing run, which isn't maybe a stat if you mean the numbers on the card, but still some tweaks... And we have seen before, not many of them. So, like you said, don't hold your breath. Yeah. So, um, I'm guessing maybe one or two cards more before the next edition, whenever yeah. that will be. I mean, we don't know that. So, But uh, I would like to jump in there and say, I, I thought it was on Facebook as well, there was some discussion about, isn't it time for a new card pack uh, for each of the um, affiliations now? And... Uh, I'm beginning more and more. I, and even though I was one of those that did, I played with the old cards. I still play with some of the old cards because mm. the stats are so similar. Uh, I actually just bought the Allied card pack. But I'm finding it that I would actually, if I could get a complete SSU Axis uh, Allied, and perhaps a, perhaps a combo then with the Merc Smiths and IGN in one, I would. Now I'm starting to get the interest of it because I felt when they came. It wasn't that much, but a little thing here, a little bit there, mm. some new special uh, cards you would have loved. Yeah, yeah, get them in the app, and the app is good. But I am one of those that like to sit and hold my cards and do my lists. Mm. Also, if I know I'm playing someone uh, who's going to play perhaps a certain fraction, why not take those cards and sit and look at, oh, what possibilities might he or she be bringing here? Um, mm. It's to me, or in for, in in when we go to a tournament beforehand, go through the other stats of the other armies that I w- might be facing. So I wouldn't I, mind a new, uh, le- a new release of the cars. In a- um, I agree in, in, in principle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think uh, I, 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 I too would like to have that, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't think the studio will do it. Oh, well. I think that's, that's kind of the, the yeah. difference there, unfortunately, maybe. Yeah, there's been a lot of new units coming out mm. to to include everything. Those mm-hmm. card packs are going to be. They will be well. well one thing is that uh, in in the in the old card packs there were multiple copies of yeah. most units as well. So maybe if you do something with only one of each unique one. Yeah, and the Mercs were in the SSU. Yes. So uh, you still have the possibility to have like four packs. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Mm. All right, uh, next up we have a bunch of questions from Mateusz Kuczynski. First up, do you think that upgrading Ranger automatic rifles to USMC style, style bar automatic rifles would fix them? They are the same range, but the damage output for the first is laughably low. Well, you both uh, are playing quite a lot of Rangers. How do you feel about the, the rifles there? Yeah, I can see what it means, but... First of all, it would be historically not correct if <laughs> if that holds mm. any weight at all in this game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but to me, that would feel a bit strange to suddenly mm. have. Uh, yeah, do that. I don't know. I, I I wouldn't like that just because of the the theme, because of the actual history all right. of it. And I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. I would want to see that anyways. Uh, I think because then they get sort of too similar, if you know what I mean. The yeah. flavor of them would mm-hmm. become too similar. So I, I don't, I'm not sure I would like it gameplay-wise either. I would probably prefer something else. And uh, as in many cases, the, the, you know, the easiest fix that I could see would be a points costs shift somehow. Mm-hmm. And in many cases, I've said this before, in many, many cases, I don't think the problem is with the Rangers. I think the problem is with other stuff that is a little bit too cheap. Yeah. Not only the uh, the Marines. I think they have a few units that could be a point or two more expensive. 
but also in other factions. It's it's the same, mm. uh, and it's it's not that much, but that tweak would probably get you know go a long way. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and also I started thinking about uh, platoon fixing something. <laughs> Perhaps you can have like um, if uh, if your allied uh, rangers can't if they stand still, you can double the amount of dice they deal that turn. Perhaps or just may or, give their ammo, give them the salvo skill or something. Yeah, uh, perhaps that. Yeah, they can produce more. Than, yeah, you, they can shoot two uh, dice, but then they have to reload yeah. because they go low on ammo. Mm. Something like that would be nice for the game. Uh, that could also just perhaps be even actually. Now you don't have the platoon thing. Give the. Uh, I, I don't think that give the give... automatic rifles the possibility for salvo. Uh, I'm not sure I, I would go that far. I, I kind of like that idea with uh, having a, a platoon that gives them the salvo skill. Oh, okay. uh, mm. I think that's the, the kind of more elegi- elegant solution okay. there. Well, it, it, it works for me as well. Yeah. I wouldn't mind. Uh, next question from Matthäus. If Axis were to have a superhuman, who would you imagine that to be? I think we have uh, talked about this before. Uh, mm. Not that I can remember exactly <laughs> what we, came, what we uh, ended up... Uh, Thinking there, but uh, mm. in the... no, well, it's something <clears throat> like the Red Skullish thing is, yes. it was, is well, of course good. But I mean, mm. uh, the Axis had the most non superhero superheroes, so to speak. With all the monkeys, they are almost superheroes. With the flying monkey, with the Greg, with the uh, and uh, of course with Frank von Stein. I yeah. mean, that's the closest thing for me to a superhuman they have at the moment. Mm, yeah, well, you can argue that as well. Mm. So. Uh, to me, it's not. I, I, I don't think if I play uh, Axis, I'm not missing the superhuman. Uh, not that I'm perhaps mm. doing it in the other fractions as I well. I mean, but yeah, other in, orders, but, uh, in this case, I'm guessing that he actually means some um, a hero with the superhuman rules. Yes. With, mm. You know, everything yeah, comes with that, which is basically they are more they have a lot more survivability but they can also not join any other unit Mm. Uh, and if i recall correctly the last time we talked about this uh, i don't know if we agreed on it (laughs) but i feel that the axis don't really need or maybe even want one of those you know really tough hard guy going out there and kicking ass Uh, if they would get one superhuman I would rather see some kind of support-ish character. Hmm. Someone who hangs back a little bit more and, and yeah. do cool stuff from from maybe not the front and center of the field. Yeah. Right. Next question from Matthäus is, what are your tactics against IJN? Don't you find them too powerful? Well, I... I can say uh, that personally, I don't think I played against them enough to really have a kind of crystallized tactic but uh, they definitely can seem very powerful just depending on how you build the army i mean we have we have that <laughs> legendary ninja ninja swarm that roger brought to dust nordic uh, last year for example that a lot of people had trouble dealing with and uh, i think usually for for much of these things it's kind of the same issue they are still quite new and people haven't adapted really um, that doesn't mean that they actually are too powerful and I think it's still a bit too early to say it. they might be um, but I think it's too early to call it yeah I agree with everything you say mm. and I since I don't have any concrete to add to mm. it I'll just go like the uh, classic uh, well I'll nuke them till they glow and shoot them in the dark kind of <laughs> uh, that's that's how I deal with it well uh, yeah. th- there are there are some options that's uh, been recently discussed I mean we, we talked about it a little bit when we mm. talked about the yeah, yeah. Uh, the allied planes yeah. I mean the bombing run yeah. uh, and especially for the thunder mm-hmm. is it with the missile pods mm-hmm. that's devastating against the ninja, ninja swarm it ought to be it ought yeah. to be I mean, four blasts against four different units in yeah. best case. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really not very good. No. And so. then you have those 12 dice to start picking off the ones that limp around. So, yeah. I mean, no, uh, 
There definitely are options. You just have to uh, switch around. I mean, that, that's kind of the, the thing that happens in a lot of cases. I mean, people go with their tried and true armies. They fight against something new and they get completely wiped. Yeah. And then they say, oh, that's just too powerful. And then they adapt. Yeah. And um, I'm sort of in the same boat there that I haven't played enough hmm. against them to, to really know. But so far, I don't feel that they are too powerful. The only thing that I'm really, you know, like scared of is that platoon where uh, if a ninja unit holds the objective, you can't contest it. You have to yeah, kill them. Yeah, that is really, really nasty. And with improved camouflage, that can be super difficult. That That's the only thing that I really see as that I'm scared of. Yeah. I won't say you know that I will win every game. Obviously, I will, but otherwise, other than that, I I kind of see it as a, as sort of a fair fight. I have yeah. to outthink them. I have to use my abilities and weapons exactly. in, a, in a better, in a smarter way somehow to get yeah. around stuff. But that one is so difficult to counter. Mm. And uh, one one thing to mention here also is that uh, none of us have really played with the IJN no. so far. Uh, I have plans to, to build an army with them, but I haven't uh, really proceeded that much in those plans yet. But I think this is a question that we are going to return to uh, at some point. Um, when, when our experience uh, is... Greater, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the moment they are so new. There are very few IGN heroes so mm. far. They are still like building up, and I'm, I'm, I feel fairly sure that sometime in the future, the IGN will get divided into factions, mm. and at that point, there will also be, like, like with all the others, it's going to be a lot of interesting choices of how you put that together. Oh and, yes, uh, faction bonus or not or whatever. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they are still a very young <laughs> block in the game, so it's it's difficult in many ways to to really estimate if they are too good or not. But so far, I I don't feel mm. I don't I don't feel them you know as as a big problem. Mm. And the final question from Matthias: If you had to create a new block or new faction for Dust, what would it be? Um, well, first off, if, if we're talking about blocks, I'm not sure, uh, just looking at like the historical kind of uh, world fluff, I, can't, I have a hard time seeing another block uh, coming in and threatening the big ones that exist now. Uh, we, we do know that the Vril are coming, that's a big thing of course that's going to shake up, they are definitely a block of their own. Maybe if there's uh, a new, uh, another not Lovecraftian type of creatures that could kind of get added, but we're, if we're talking about a a human army based block, I don't really see that happening. The only thing I can think of is well, um, obviously I would like to see the uh, special service brigade. Yeah. Mean, the Brits. We talked about this before yeah. as well. Some more, you know, kind of specialized or, or a British sub faction. Mm. Uh, but a completely new block. Maybe what are they called? The Majestic Twelves. Hmm. Those mysterious uh, organization, rich people, you know, controlling, oh, yeah. like, mm-hmm. Illuminati style, controlling things behind the scene. Maybe they could have their own that, that, special forces. It's an interesting idea, but at the same time, if they are a shadowy organization, do they really send people to the battlefield in with their colors and, like, flaunting their flags? I don't know how they would mm. solve it. Yeah. But no, well, I, I feel it's totally given because uh, when we play the uh, Dust games, uh, us has so many times uh, pressed on the fact that it's the end of a big battle uh, and if a shadow organization pops up with like 20 guys and two walkers specially delivered coming mm. out from the f- from left side yeah uh, that could be it could be totally cool because they don't have they don't gonna engage in the big fights they don't have the big machines uh, they could be uh, so I can, kind of a super elite force so that yeah, every yeah. unit is really really expensive but yeah. also hits incredibly hard something like that yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I, I could see something like 
be, those units being super powerful, I mean like borderline overpowered, but at the end of the game they automatically count as destroyed or something like that. Mm. So, so the opponent will get some points of it, so it's kind of a two-edged sword in yeah. that way. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. Just yeah, that could be interesting. Throwing um, ideas yeah. around. And <laughs> if we're talking about factions then inside uh, the existing blocks, I mean, we, we have talked about some before. Like, uh, for instance, we know that the uh, Japanese army is still a part of the Axis block. So that could be an interesting future faction, I feel. Uh, so you still have Japanese characters, but a to- completely different flavor. And that also opens up for uh, a new style of walkers, a new style of tanks, new weaponry that we haven't seen before. That, uh, to me at least, seems like a, uh, like a given idea to, to spin around on. And I have, of course, one fraction and a block that uh, had popped up in my head. The first fraction I would like to see is a fraction for the mercenaries. And I would go, and it's a little bit inspired by the fact that I'm watching the Titans now, of course. (laughs) uh, There the uh, daughter of Troy is in. So, I mean, something like the Amazons, but not anything that it borders on the rights from DC or any other, but like, so... Perhaps even the studio could clean up a little bit the Mercs and then Paolo could get creative freedom more with a new fraction of ladies that are more, perhaps not explicit, but but they are more dynamic, more, a little bit. And of course, he had that fantasy project, which has been very fun to study from afar. But, you know, the other, and he could be able to do some units for some more mysterical, almost superhuman, but they don't need to be type four and stuff like that and have super, but just have that more interesting uh, shapes and war weapons, perhaps even fighting with swords or something like that. They hmm. can have like, but, but they, or so being something, a spin off there, I would like to see that. The uh, block. To me, it's quite quite easy, actually. Uh, it's, of course, the Atlanteans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, because when the Vril comes and we know that the Earth will start to reshape, the slumbering city of Atlantis is rising again or something. It will also give you the possibility to p- 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 fight with the... Um, and well, what do they call the the, the 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 depths the deep the, ones the deep ones yeah against the, you can have special tables set up with mm. within the underwater okay that's perhaps five ten years in the future because they need to produce those lines and stuff like that but some sort of uh, but but they can also move the Atlanteans they don't have to be like Namor or 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 like uh, My Little Mermaid or something like that. They can be actually normal humans that fight on land, mm-hmm. but perhaps have some, or there's something special with their connection to the water, or or the city has been slumbered and now it awakens, and it it gets a power base in the middle mm. of Atlantic or something, and they fight out from there, and they can be like the enemies of the mythos. They can be the enemies of the Vril, perhaps. It was a big, the big uh, thing that happened when the uh, mythos went away and the uh, uh, Rill went away. Perhaps the Atlanteans had something to do with it, and it was that what made Atlantis sink or yeah. something like that. And well, yeah, just that's, that's yeah, very interesting thought actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, and our next question comes from Bill Hegg. Allied aircraft block or faction change? Is that uh, something that's coming up? Well, we, we've talked about this already. If you didn't watch our main show, uh, this episode, before watching this one, then you probably should because we talked about it at length. Yeah. <laughs> This is coming. Uh, we have the Allies and the USMC uh, Storm, Storm and Thunder right here. <laughs> that is coming. And we know also that the Black Mamba that uh, is uh, coming up for, for the Allies is also a USMC uh, aircraft. So, yeah, definitely. The other question from Bill. Uh, one aircraft or two mortar teams? Uh, Yes, is the answer. Yes, yes. <laughs> definitely. That's a s- simple question, simple answer. Yes. yes, I would say it depends on a lot of things. Uh, before this change to the rule of the Allied uh, flyers, I would have gone with two mortar teams all the all the time. Now that we have the bombing run rules, 
this is much more of a individual situation type of of thing. Um, I would probably, uh, since we still haven't really played with the new plane rules, I can't say for sure, uh, but at least for how I would do it, if I had that situation, I'm going to build an allied army and I have this opportunity. Do I take an aircraft or do I take two mortars? I would, now that uh, the rules have been updated, I would take the aircraft because I think it's more fun. I've yeah. played with mortars a lot before. I've never played with one of the allied aircraft and now I have a reason to. I really want to check that out. And I think a lot of people are going to do that. So uh, I would lean aircraft in this case, definitely. Yeah, you're spot on. Mm. Aircraft for fun, mortars for success, so to speak. Yeah, yeah I would go that, <laughs> that way. And, and uh, maybe also aircraft for success in the future. We'll see how these uh, rules changes uh, shakes things up. Okay, Greg Babalo uh, uh, chimed in and uh, gave us a few questions. First off, organized play 2020-2021. What would you like to see in the next online campaign? So now after we have uh, Paradise Lost, what would we like to see after this? Ooh, that, that, that's a tough one, I feel. Well, so far, I think they've been doing a pretty good job mm -hmm. with the, you know, the, the short, uh, the, like, story snippets. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, at least, maybe not every time, but quite a few times, uh, they have completely new scenarios. Yeah, that, that's uh, a big one. I haven't played, I've played far from all of them, but I played a couple of them at least, and uh, they were fun. And it's always nice to see what, what new ideas they come up mm -hmm. with. Um I don't know, to get specific stuff, I remember when we talked about this, I think Greg asked this almost the exact same yeah, question. Very similar, uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Before, and I remember what I said a bit back then, and it was maps. Mm -hmm. And I still hold on to that, because I, do, I like maps, and I think it's a very nice, with that, um, yeah, graphic representation of seeing, I like those... Mm. A few arrows of this is where the troops come from. This is how they move. Or here were, you know, if the story talks about some battle, it's nice to see where on the map that battle was. Mm -hmm. um, That's an interesting thought. And uh, if, we, if we go to that kind of narrative uh, part of the organized play, uh, I would like to see more uh, kind of both stories and scenarios, uh, events that are focused on the named characters that you can actually use in the game. Uh, those were some of my favorite parts of the, of the stories in the expansion books, for, for example, that you can actually follow some of your favorite characters and see their fates and see what happens to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so more of that would be really cool, I would feel. Yeah, and why not if there's, it's a little bit perhaps hard, but if they, it's able to do, uh, link the scenarios. Uh, two or three together so you start when you play the after you played the first scenario that comes out then you get some bonus if you played the first one if you mm. want a lost so you can play yeah. the other one so perhaps they can be played individual or but every three scenarios or sometimes three scenarios in a row is linked together yeah. and you don't have to release them all at once no. it can be just or okay. the, the, a very easy thing there is just if it's, an, uh, if it's an asymmetrical scenario where one player is the attacker and one is the defender, mm -hmm. then who is the attacker and who is the defender is determined by who won or lost yeah. the previous match. Yeah. I mean, that's some, you can do a lot of things like that. Mm -hmm. So, that, yeah, interesting uh, idea there, I think. Uh, next question from Greg. And uh, list, how many lists do you have saved on your devices right now? Oh, pff, I, I haven't counted, but it's a lot. I, I, I generally don't delete my lists after creating them, so I just can go back and look at what I've done. So it's it's quite a bunch of them. And the most annoying thing is that I normally... It's not always that I renamed them from the default. So <laughs> there are a lot of like access list one, access list two, and so which one is which. So that, but that's a me problem. That's not an app problem. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I usually don't save too many. You know, I, I I don't want to keep them and reusing the exact same list. I like making up new, and I I usually I mean, I kind of remember the rough edges of a list. 
And if I want to play something similar, then fine, I will make something similar, but still, you know, start from scratch yeah. with that. You, you like to keep so, a clean slate and an yeah, open mind. Yeah, so usually I only mm. have it like a couple. At this exact very moment, I have exactly zero oh. because I changed my phone not too long ago. <laughs> so since then, I haven't really made any new lists mm. in the app. So it's it's completely empty. <laughs> yeah, and I have to go with zero as well, but that's almost a similar thing. Yeah. My old phone that I used with the app has crashed. Yeah. And now at the moment, my regular computer is crashing as well. So yeah. I'm just starting with a tablet and I haven't started, I haven't, it's so new, I haven't made any list in the tablet, but yeah. I will, it, it, there will it, be... Because some... you, you actually got that today. Yesterday. No, <laughs> no, yesterday. 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 Okay. yesterday. So, so, so it's not... It's, it's, I, I, I feel I'm excused for not having any list so far. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, and Greg also asked, what, are your, what is your favorite novella between the release of Condor and Paradise Lost? And I... Well, novella. I don't. I don't think he's, he means the uh, the printed books here, <laughs> or no. uh, it's r- rather the short stories that they've been mailing out with the uh, with the newsletters uh, is probably what I think he's referring to here. And to be honest, uh, I haven't read all of them. <laughs> I've read most of them, I think, and they are very uh, enjoyable. But I think um, the one I really enjoyed was the volcano one. Uh, was it under the volcano, something like that, mm-hmm. where the, we have the pilot that crashes and uh, there's a lot of m- mythos and uh, stuff going on. And yeah, I, that one stuck out to me. Maybe because yeah, I'm a mythos I, fan. So <laughs> yeah, now that was a cool one. They were very well mm. written, and I would definitely like to see more of them. Uh, I can't really pinpoint specifics though. Because well, it's been for a while now a lot about the mythos, which is yes, which is course. fine, okay. But I don't have that personal interest in that, so it doesn't really you know mm-hmm. grab me that way. Um, but still, they are very well done. So good job. Yeah, and I, I'll I'll hold him ransom until Dust Studio uh, collects all these and prints them in a paperback. That would be awesome. Then. I will, so I can put it in my bookshelf, then I will give you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and the final question from Greg, what army wears pink the best of IJN Ninjas or Blood Corps Gorillas? Uh, I actually have a very, uh, very clear answer here. I would definitely go for the d- Gorillas. I mean, what's more intimidating than a heavily armed gorilla wearing a pink tutu? Yeah, but I, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I can't disagree with you now. I would love to say the ninjas, but I'm, I'm. I'm always thinking with the red ninjas, of course, with the yeah. Deadpool. But but, but the, when you go to pink, yeah, yeah, I, but the I gorillas, want the gorillas. They don't really wear. To, they have their gloves and maybe their helmets. Yeah, yeah exactly. So that's so... why they should wear the, the tutu. Okay. okay yeah. yeah. Or I, I can pa- I can pa- I can paint a squad of gorillas pink. Yeah. I, they can yeah be if, if you do that, yeah, I can paint uh, my uh, IJN ninjas pink. Yeah, okay. So yeah. <laughs> you want them? No, no, no. Okay, so you're not really. <laughs> I might actually do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like the idea. <laughs> so. You go. You do that. You do that. All right, and our final question for this episode comes from Brian Keith Younes. What are your guys' favorite WW2 movies, and have they inspired any of your wargaming in terms of scenarios or models you've made? Uh, well, uh, I can start there. As I, I'm, I haven't really used uh, any movies for direct inspiration for creating scenarios or models in that way, but, but I can say for my favorite uh, World War II movie, I'm kind of old school, um, I think I would have to go with. Um, uh, I can actually, I can actually mention two. If we mention a, a serious one and a not so serious <laughs> one, so for the serious one, I would probably pick uh, the Bridge on River Kwai. That is, uh, it's a real classic. I really enjoy that one. Uh, for the less serious one, I would say the the Tea House of Blue. Is it the Blue Moon? Something like that. Um, which is uh, originally a stage comedy. It's really, okay. if, you, if you haven't seen that, it's not that well known uh, nowadays, but it's basically uh, an officer uh, in, the, uh, in the Allied army that uh, uh, has to take command of a Jap- little Japanese village and uh, make production and everything. He's kind of the local, 
the local boss. And <laughs> what happens is that they decide, he, he kind of gets indoctrinated by the villagers, to, and they together uh, build a tea house. And <laughs> when he tries to, <laughs> he tries to defend this to, to his superior officers, it's like, well, this is, this is great. We're doing all this together. Everyone is helping in. Everyone is taking care of the profits. Like, but that's communism! <laughs> it's a really funny movie, and yeah, you, should, you should check it out if you have the opportunity. So. <laughs> sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's so so many good movies, so yeah. I, I I couldn't pinpoint one particularly. I mean, as you mentioned, River Kwai is, is wonderful. Uh, the Iron Cross, Eagle Has Land, and mm. A Bridge Too Far. Uh, I mean, you can go, and of course, Kelly's the heroes. Kelly's heroes. I think it's uh, we always say Kelly's Yelta in Sweden because <laughs> yeah. it's uh, just stuck so hard. Yeah, and it's a it's uh, a classic war gaming scenario at yeah, Gothcon as well. So definitely. So well. Yeah. And uh, to to me, I mean, Fury is there mm. up, up above uh, now nowadays, and uh, there's there's a lot of good uh, movies uh, made about this. That um, well, it's 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 very hard picking one. Um, yeah, it's it's very difficult for me. Mm. I also watch uh, quite a few documentaries. It has um, been a while now, but there's you know uh, over the last I don't know five ten years uh, a lot of very good documentaries have been made yeah. um, on the subject. So that's always cool to get you know more factual stuff as well. Um, the one that kind of pops into my head, I can't remember the name of it, but it's about the uh, Russian sniper woman uh, that's um, oh, yeah. uh, the inspiration mm. for uh, yeah. Rosa. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I can't... It's yeah. completely blank right now in my head, but that, that movie... Or maybe there are several of them, I, I'm not sure, but this one is actually produced by Russians as well, mm. the one I'm thinking of, so it, it kind of gives it some... Some validity. Yeah, you want to... sort of. It kind yeah. of sets you more into to that part of the war and, and to those characters. So I, like, yeah, I enjoyed that one. I'm, I'm starting to think also for all this, perhaps more for the Swedish viewers, because I don't think you get it abroad. But uh, for you Swedes out there who hasn't seen Gränsen or The Border, I came a few years ago. It's very low budget, uh, only a handful of people. Um, and uh, but it, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that very much. So it would be interesting to hear what other people thought about it. So, um, but that's that's one I can throw out there. Yeah, sure. And when it comes to uh, to building scenarios or getting inspiration from that, is that something that uh, that you've done? It's it's usually uh, for me at least it's hard to kind of translate that sort of directly because a movie is always a lot about oh the cat is on it yeah, yeah, yeah I have the to cat fix is on that it. Um, yeah. uh, it, it's sort of difficult because a movie is always you know about the the, the overall story and the characters and, and their problems so it's kind of difficult to translate that into a scenario. Mm. Uh, but you can use like a general idea or a general, okay, so this is a, whatever, a beach assault or a, um, yeah, some like an airfield or whatever you want to, to get some sort of setting and, and try to get some inspiration. Uh, but it's hard to kind of directly translate it into, at least that's, that's how I feel. Um, but there's so, so much material, both like yeah. movies and documentaries and books and stuff that you can use to get, get inspiration. There is so yeah. much. Absolutely. Yep. So with that, uh, I just guess I just have to say that if you want your questions answered by us in our next episode, you are very welcome to send them as an email to dustwarjournals at gmail.com or just uh, keep an eye up on Facebook, which is usually where we ask for questions, uh, usually the day before we record, so you have some time there. Uh, but until uh, our next show and our next time, then uh, a big thank you for staying with us from me, Johannes. And from Magnus. And as always from Lida. And as usual, we shall see you on the battlefield. 
Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.